So we've talked a lot about depression and how to um, get free from depression. Today we're going to talk about depression and suicide. And we're going to particularly look at the spiritual side of suicide. So let's look at the main reasons for suicide for our mental health, health experts. Um, but the big question is why are the spiritual issues so rarely discussed? So we're going to go into that in some kind of detail. So the first, um, one of the main reasons for uh, suicide is depression, bipolar anxiety, schizophrenia, traumatic experience. Traumatic experience, uh, if you're a victim of, of physical abuse, sexual abuse, uh, and have dealt with trauma, uh, you're much more likely to end up with post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, these disorders and the feelings associated with, tra with traumatic experiences can lead a person to, sui to suicide. Personal disorders, drug addiction, substance abuse, eating disorders, social uh, isolation, loneliness, relationship problems. These are the main reasons our mental health experts tell us that uh, are the reasons for suicide. And, and this is true. These, these are the main reasons. Um, but what, we, what, what they never mention is the spiritual side of these issues. And we're going to take a look at that and, and the spiritual issues that can lead a person to take their own lives. And we want to, the question is why? And we're going to dig into this and take a look at the spiritual side of depression and suicide. So I want to take a look at the spiritual side of suicide and see if we can identify the spiritual issues that experts seem so reluctant to talk about. So first of all, let's take a look at spiritual from the, from the dictionary. Uh, it says relating, relating or affecting the human spirit or soul as opposed to material or physical things. And again, from Wiki, traditional spirit, spirituality refers to a religious process of reformation which aims to recover the original shape of man, originated at the image of God, as exemplified by the founders and sacred texts of the religions of the world. So these are um, how we would, we would describe the spiritual side. And again, it's rela relating to the first one in the dictionary is probably easier, more easier to understand, affecting the human spirit or soul as opposed to material or physical things. So let's take a look at the common issues uh, that we're dealing with depression. Let's take, for instance, we're just taking this as a for instance, there's many others, but we're just going to take guilt, shame, and condemnation as and look at the spiritual side of this because we know guilt, shame, and condemnation are um, are things that lead to a person to be depressed and then can be suicidal. So the first question, does the issue relate to the physical side or the, sp or the, or the spirit and soul of a person when it comes to guilt, shame, and condemnation? And I think we know the answer to that. And I think we can all agree, <laughs> as guilt, shame, and condemnation definitely has a spiritual side. Um, guilt refers to our, the sense of having done something wrong, either in reality or, or in our imagination. It relates to real or imagined actions or inactions which have caused real or imagined harm to others. And guilt, shame, and condemnation, every single human being deals with this. Uh, this is no mystery. Again, is it spiritual? Does it affect the soul um, as well as the physical mind? Of course it does. So shame, on the other hand, relates to our sense of who we are. We feel in some way we have fallen short, both in our own eyes and the eyes of others. The parent who says what you did was naughty might induce guilt. The parent who says you are a naughty child might induce shame. And here's what we want to look at. Here's what, what modern psychology says about guilt today. And this is very important because we've got to look at, we're asking the question, why is the spiritual side not, not discussed in these debates about depression and suicide? So from, the, um, from psychology, here's what is said. And, and this is a gen these are general statements, but if you look it up, you'll see that this is fairly common uh, approach to guilt. Guilt is a normal feeling. Everyone feels guilt. It makes sense. Well, that, that's true. Uh, we all make mistakes. And we all feel bad about them. It's just plain human, and that's true about Gil, it's just plain human. But then they want to say 90% of mil mental illness guilt is a waste of time. So let's take a look at this. And here's more quotes from our, you know, our psychiatry and mental health, health experts. A lot of them say that all, all that guilt chips away at your brain, your mind, your sanity, and your happiness. All that guilt is just black poison said to make you have a very bad day. And once you felt the guilt, expressed it and made amends, let it go already. Talk back to the guilt. Tell it, you, tell it you're not listening. Tell it it's not reasonable. Tell it you're bigger and better than it, because you are. Now, I don't know about you listen to, this, listen to this video here, but that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Telling guilt that you're not listening, 
tell us that it's not reasonable. Does that really work for anybody? Is that real? And then you're going to say, and you deserve to feel better. You deserve to, to breathe without guilt. We all do. Does this approach make any sense at all? If you're having issues with guilt and shame, do you believe that this remedy will work for you? I, I doubt it. And that's why when you read some of these things about the spiritual side of guilt, shame, and condemnation and how psychiatry and modern experts today deal with this issue, this is what they come up with. And again, to me, it, it doesn't make any sense. And I don't think it works for anybody. Um, I don't think to tell it it's not reasonable. Is that re it, really to tell guilt, shame, and condemnation not reasonable? And it'll go away from this stuff? I don't think so. But this is the response of most uh, mental health experts. And many of these experts never discuss the spiritual side of the issues at all. Is there any wonder that the depression and suicide rates are going, are going up? And again, surely we can give a better answer to people who struggle with these issues. And there are much better answers to these spiritual problems of guilt uh, and shame. That most every person that suffers from depression and suicidal thoughts are having to deal with. They're having to deal with these thoughts. And this is the answers we come up with? Um, again, it just makes you wonder um, why, again, why we're we not looking at the spiritual side of these things and why are we coming up with some of these answers that don't make any sense at all? Now, we're just we're talking about the spiritual side of guilt, shame, and condemnation, but and I, I might go on and make some more videos about the spiritual side of some of these other issues that are really... They're, 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 these are some issues that... that People that are dealing with depression and suicide are dealing with. Um, it's, these are very common. Hopelessness, traumatic experiences, personal, personality disorders, drug addiction, substance abuse, eating disorders, social isolation, loneliness, relationship problems. And these all these issues, you can tell that there is a soul realm, there is a spiritual side to these all these other issues here. And it's just a shame that we're not talking about these things. And that's, again, what I want to emphasize here, talking about the spiritual side. And we're going to get into this why we're not talking about the spiritual side. And I'm convinced that I've been working at this now for 10, 15 years with people um, with depression and suicidal thoughts, anxiety, etc. And And I know this can, when you look at the spiritual side of things, I know this can help people. I know it can help them. Uh, that's why I'm making this video, because I know that looking at the spiritual side of these issues can help a person. And dealing with it, when you, when you deal with the spiritual side of some of these issues, you, you're a long way to getting into freedom. You're a long way to, from putting this thing behind you uh, when you deal with the spiritual issues. So that's what we're all about. We're trying to look and see if we can help people by looking at the spiritual side of some of these issues. And yes, the real reason it's not mentioned, the spiritual side is not mentioned, is because psychology does not want to discuss the possibility of sin. That's what's going on here. <laughs> they don't want to talk about the possibility of sin. So does psychiatry and psychiatrists teach people to practice moral responsibility? Or do they justify, rationalize, and excuse immor immorality and blame shifting? What about the need to acknowledge sin and error, repentance, and to be forgiven by God? And how does this play into, how does this, how, how, would, how would this help a person when a person can, can know that they can be forgiven of their sins and, and this will be, go a long way to get rid of the guilt and shame? How does psychology uh, harmonize with the Bible standards of Christianity? Psychology often views guilt as a disease for which the sinner is not accountable. You know, and again, that does not work. That does not work. Psychology often teaches people to blame others for their failures in life. That doesn't work either. That's why, I believe, that's why the numbers of depression and suicidal uh, problems all over the world are, are getting worse because we're not dealing with the foundational issues here. And again, the church, as, as again, a lot of the church has gone to psychiatry for some of these answers. When we have the answers from God, we have the answers through the New Testament. We have the answers through the finished work of Jesus. When we participate in sinful behavior, we can't excuse ourselves by saying or thinking that we should not be held accountable because we, we, we could not help ourselves. That doesn't work. That, that will not get rid of guilt, shame, and condemnation. No matter how much you try and convince yourself, that flat doesn't work. Ask anybody who's really dealing with this, these, some of these issues um, and see if that worked for them. It flat doesn't. And it brings on, matter of fact, when you try, I think when you try and, when you try and answer these questions or when you try and go after this without the spiritual side it they become worse the lies become more intense psychology often urges people to accept themselves as they are without changing their sinful contact co conduct 
the proper psychological expression, I'm okay, you're okay, nobody's wrong, nobody's any more right than anybody else. Just accept yourself as you are and accept everybody else as they are. But the gospel teaches us that Jesus was crucified to save men for the consequences of sin, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from, from a guilty conscience, and that God will remember our sins no more. Think about that. That this is what Jesus died for, that the, 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 the conscience, the guilty conscience is completely cleansed because God will remember that sin no more. That's a promise from God in Hebrews 8.12. What a promise. God will remember our sins no more. But if all conduct, all conduct is as good as any other, then there is no such thing as sin, no such thing as consequences for sin, and therefore no need for Jesus to die. That, obviously, that's not true. All humans have guilt, shame, and condemnation from past sins. All humans do. All throughout humanity you can see this, that there is guilt, shame, and condemnation from past sins. To ask a person to forget past sins or to ignore or to put them under the carpet, the guilt, shame, and condemnation is preposterous and it makes no sense and it doesn't work. There's only one way to get the guilt, shame, and condemnation from past sins and that's get the forgiveness only comes through the cross of Jesus Christ and to get your, our Heavenly Father to say, I will remember those sins no more. This is the only remedy and the everlasting remedy for a Christian. It is the promise of, I will remember your sins no more. This promise will bring a clear conscience, will wash away all guilt, shame, and condemnation that comes from past sins. There is no comparison from the freedom setting truth from the Word of God to any man-made remedy from depression, anxiety, panic attacks, trauma, eating disorders, cutting, anger and rage, suicidal thoughts, and any other oppressions. There is no comparison. We must address the spiritual problem. When the spiritual issues are overcome, then the person can taste the freedom that Jesus has provided. And no human psychi psychotherapy. Uh, again, you know, this helps people a little bit. I'm not saying it doesn't. Cognitive behavior helps people a little bit. Changing our life beliefs. But none of these things can compare with the truths from the Word of God to help set a captive free. And when you, when you get the uh, talk therapy and you get the changing online beliefs therapy and you apply that to the Word of God and you go to the Word of God to, get, to answer these questions, then that's when freedom comes. Once a spiritual battle is won against any of these oppressions, like depression, anxiety, fear, bulimia, and the rest of them, psychological disorders, the battle in the flesh can be overcome much easier. But there is no freedom until the spiritual battle is won because the essence of these disorders are spiritually based. And that's the point we're trying to make here. The essence of these disorders are spiritually based. So when you attack the spiritual battle and you win the spiritual battle, then freedom is on its way. If you've been oppressed for a long time, these words may be hard for you to believe, but the words of Jesus are clear and they're true and they're true to this day. They come echoing down through the centuries, but the same truth, the same freedom from the, fr the truth will set you free is, is, is in these words. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I have come to set the captives free. If you've got depression and suicidal issues, you're a captive. And who the Son sets free, the Son can set you free. If you continue my words, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of, the, of, of their testimony. When we go to God through Jesus Christ to get our sins forgiven, it brings tremendous hope. It lifts the soul, and it can bring a sense of peace that is supernatural. Why would we not want to tell people about the grace and mercy of God to get our sins forgiven and, as the Bible says, to cleanse the conscience from all guilt, shame, and condemnation? And by the way, if you're interested and you want to become a Christian and you want to go after this you can um, and get a brand new life from God, you can email me at patbuckley82 at gmail.com. I'd be glad to talk to you, talk to you about uh, how to become a Christian and how you can get freedom from these things because... And the, Jesus, again, I've come to set the captives free. He, he said that. He means it. He's not just saying that. It's not just a caption. It's not just a slogan. He said, I have come to set the captives free, and he means it. And he will set every captive free. He will. He has. He's done it through the finished work. So people need more than the knowledge that other people love them. They need meaning. They need hope. They need to know there is a point in their lives, a reason for being. When people get to understand that God is our reason, our foundation, our truth, our purpose, and the substance of our lives, that we're not mere accidents, we're not clumps of dust that 
grow randomly from the earth and somehow develop consciousness and a moral code and the capacity for love? That doesn't make sense, and we all know it doesn't make sense. And we will literally kill ourselves trying to make sense of it. There is spiritual character to humanity, and we all innately recognize it. We find despair when we reject it and try to separate ourselves from it and from ourselves. Hope is found when we can embrace who we are as children of God, and we can keep our eyes and hearts focused on eternity, on home. God wants us there with Him, more life to be lived, and we can live it in peace and joy, purpose and fulfillment, knowing that there is a meaning and a point to all of this, and acknowledge that there is a spiritual side to life that needs to be looked at and to be understood.